Completing a Stuart triple expansion engine, this one is part 21. Reassembling and aligning the crankshaft. After I removed the crankshaft, I put all the bearings, the bottom ones and the top ones, in a box, in the exact order that I removed them from the sole plate. But unfortunately, owing to the work that I've been doing rearranging the workshop, the box on the bench was disturbed, and instead of two nice neat rows of bearing parts, they were all jumbled up. All that it meant was I had to sort them out into the correct order, and I didn't make a video about that because it took about an hour. Finally, everything fitted together. And here's the job so far. Getting the crankshaft right is one of the most important parts about building or rebuilding a steam engine. If you don't get the crankshaft right, if it's not aligned properly, everything will just get worse the more parts you add to the crankshaft. I'm removing the connecting rods as you can see, and I'm marking each one with a number so it goes back in exactly the same place. That's what I should have done with the bearings. The top parts of these split bearings are very recognisable because they have centre pop marks punched into them. The bottom parts of the bearings don't have anything stamped on them, but they only fit in the slots that they were made to fit in, so that's not too difficult. When I neatly arranged the bearings in a row, I put these respective packings with each bearing, but unfortunately these got mixed up too. To make everything a little bit more visible, I'm marking everything with a felt tip pen. Before I start, I'm bolting the engine down onto the display plinth, or box bed, or whatever you want to call it. I placed each of the bottom split bearings into the slots in the sole plate. No packings as yet. I'll fit the packings as and when they are required. In this clip, I'm sitting the crankshaft on top of the bearings to make sure that the crankshaft aligns with the bearings. When I turn one of them round, for instance, you will see that the crankshaft no longer fits in all of the bearings. It would appear that there's some inaccuracy in the machining of these split bearings and they all need to fit in their respective slot the right way around. When I turn this bearing around, the crankshaft once again fits OK. The only problem is it rocks about on the bearings, it's not exactly level, hence the packing. These bearings are going to have to be packed precisely to suit the crankshaft. To check the horizontal alignment of the bearings, I'm using a piece of silver steel. Silver steel is accurately ground to the correct size. To align the bearings in the sole plate, I'm tapping the piece of steel with this hammer, very gently, just enough to seat the bearings. And as you can see in this clip, the piece of steel rocks about a bit. By lifting out one by one the lower bearing halves, I soon found out which of the bearings were not in the right place in the sole plate. And here I'm packing them individually with the pieces of brass. Fitting these brass shims is very much trial and error, and I've edited the video, removing all the parts of the video when I bang my head on the workbench. Eventually, I managed to stop the piece of silver steel from rocking about in the bearings. This part of the job requires a lot of patience, and some more gentle tapping. In the end, I found that no matter which way I put the shims in place, and bear in mind they're all the same thickness, I couldn't get it perfect, so I cut one more piece of brass very, very slightly thicker. In this clip, the bearing half, which is second in from the right, is too high. After a bit more packing and unpacking, finally the piece of silver steel ran accurately in the bearings. There is one more variable that I really need to mention. This triple crankshaft was machined in one piece, and it's very accurate. Even without the top bearing caps in place, it spins very well. Time for the job so far? About two hours. As I've mentioned many times in previous videos, and including at the beginning of this one, if you don't get the crankshaft and bearings right, the entire engine will not run properly. With the bottom bearings level and shim properly, it's time to fit the top caps. In this clip, I'm swapping a couple of them round, just to illustrate that even though the bearing cap fits, it doesn't fit properly because they're all made as pairs. When you make these type of bearings, you solder two halves together and then machine the soldered part as one bearing. And when you finish the machining, you just heat up the parts and they fall back into two pieces. 
Eccentric straps are usually made in the same way. What I'm doing here is double checking that I haven't made a mistake and all the bearing top caps are in the right order. Only when I was sure that all of the bearing top caps were the right way round and in the right order could have fit the bearing retaining plates complete with the oil reservoirs. I fitted the middle two and the crankshaft rotates very well. The bolts are tight, so it's looking good. Now it's time to fit the two retainers at each end. When working with soft bearings made from gunmetal, it's very important not to over tighten any bolts in the vicinity of the bearings. Over tightening can cause the distortion of bearing parts. This also applies to connecting rods as well. This is a problem that I'm going to have to rectify. When the oil cups are fitted, their shafts are a bit too long. This is a very simple fix though. I just rub the bearing retainers on a piece of emery cloth on the bench and this quickly removes the part of the brass oiler that was protruding through the bearing retainer. The procedure was as follows. I tightened up every one of the oil cups into the bearing retainers as I removed them individually. And when they looked like this, everything was fine, but I did blow through the hole in the centre to make sure the oil way wasn't blocked. Here's a close-up to show how much of the brass was sticking through. Very soon the oil cup shafts were all perfectly level with the bearing retainers. With everything back together, it's time to give the crankshaft a spin. And it's beautiful, it's spinning really well. I'm going to temporarily fit the flywheel, which is held in place with just one Allen grub screw. Not only does this crankshaft feel good when I rotate it by hand, it also spins very well when I rotate it using my small electric drill. While I'm doing this I'm keeping my eye on the oil cups to see how quickly the oil drains through into the bearings. And I notice at the opposite end of the flywheel there's some play going on. The end two bearings need a bit more packing. This is after I packed the end bearing and you can clearly see in this clip that as I rotate it the play in the end bearing is non-existent. The top cap of this bearing is below the level of the sole plate so I need to make a special packing piece with a hole in the middle to sit on top of this. Now when I refit the bearing retainer it should be fine. The black oil ring around the end of the crankshaft tells me that it's bedding in with the bearing. This should run clear in time. Just behind me is my recently refurbished Myford ML7R lathe. And when I rotate the crankshaft this way, keeping my hands well away from any of the moving parts, not only can you see that the crankshaft is very accurate, it's stuck out a long way from the chuck, there is negligible play in the bearings and everything spins very, very free. When I let go of the part, it just sits there. And when I give it a push, it swings from side to side and does this until I stop the lathe. Or in this case, I stop it with my hand. So that's it, the crankshaft is done. This has been quite a tedious but very rewarding job. And that concludes this episode. Stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.